So ASCII doc, plainish, plainish text for fancy output and system notifications. All right, um, so uh, many of you know I like plain text. I like to do things from a terminal. Uh, X is just a way of getting multiple terminals. So having things that, that allow me to use plain text for whatever it is I'm doing are awesome. Uh, they also bring a, a lot of different benefits. We'll cover some of those as we get into this. Um, but first, we're going to remember, remind me how to do this. Do an approximate history of documentation formats. I warn you, this is mostly inaccurate, so just deal. All right. In the beginning, there was ASCII text, and it was good. Then in the 1980s, other countries got electricity. That's kind of an estimate about when it was. Oops, back one. And Americans learned that there are other languages, and we invented Perl as revenge. Yeah. Perl gave us regular expressions so that we could find out what cartoon swearing means. Now, when we learned about these other languages, we had some changes. For instance, in English, dots only go over the letter I. And you can see about the commas. Yeah, OK, there we go. But suddenly, people started dotting round vowels, A's and O's and things. And e. That was weird. So we had to introduce documentation headers so we could figure out what kind of document we were looking at. And we had barbarism, the binary proprietary documentation format. Uh, then we got open again with caffeinated documentation. It was all hyper. And we all learned about nesting and throwing things inside of things. But not really readable. Uh, and we sp spent hours explaining that a slash is not a backslash. And I completely killed my backslash off in there. Yeah, I killed it. I don't know what to do with it. All right. It should go away. It was useless. All right. Well, it's useful, it's useful as a single quote, single character quote. It's not a backslash. All right. So we ended up with handcrafted documentation of slow fix, where we were be building all these things and moving stuff around by hand, which is just not really very useful. But we can fix this. So this, the birth of markup is a simplified formatting pretending to be other formatting. So we say, here's this thing we can use, and then, pre, then we can make it other things. And when simple isn't simple, you know, or whatever, the markup begat templates. We ended up with, well, this isn't simple enough. We're going to make the simple version of the simple. And of course, when we had one way of doing that, we couldn't let that stand. We had to have many ways of doing that. So there is no singular word for the singular form for the word standards. So we ended up with YAMLs, with yet another markup language, but it was yet, 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 yet another markup language. So we ended up then at some point with mark down instead of mark up. And we ended up with a lot of README files from Maryland. I still find that funny. <clears throat> so why am I talking about ASCII doc instead of markdown? So one of the things for me was I was creating documentation that, that needed table of contents. Markdown requires external tools in order to create a table of contents where it's built in to ASCII doc. And I'm like, that is useful. Uh, and it's something that I can give to other people without having to have them set up a whole big tool chain just to get a table of freaking contents. I can write that in shell script. Why should I have to go through and do a whole bunch of extra stuff to do that? Um, so uh, I, got asked, I found ASCII doc, found that it had the table of contents, which was the big thing for me. But there's a whole bunch of other things that were important too. Uh, but first, of course, we can have an ASCII bunny. All right. So ASCII doc is plain markup with a variety of output formats. So I can write one document and then, ex then go through and publish it a whole bunch of different ways. Some of the output formats are HTML, JavaScript-based web presentation. You're soaking it now. If you add even, I use it eventually. All right. Uh, DocBook, uh, that was actually what uh, ASCII doc was first created, was to be a basically a simplified interface to create DocBook documents, so books and things like that. You can create man pages. Uh, ODF, EPUB, PDF, uh, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can create out of the, the, ASC, uh, the ASCII doc uh, source, format, or source document. Where is it supported? 
on your computer, which is one of the important things, we can use it. Um, it's also supported by GitHub and GitHub Wiki. Uh, I use this a lot for uh, stuff. I'll get into that. Uh, GitLab, uh, Drupal, Red WordPress, and IkiWiki can understand ASCII doc, uh, uh, documents. Uh, and then many text editors have syntax highlighting for it. So not only do I get plain text documentation that is readable unto itself, but I can get syntax highlighting to tell me when I've got the, the formatting correct. And I don't have to worry about the formatting near as much. Uh, now what about Markdown? I already covered the table of contents. That was really a killer, killer uh, option for me uh, for the documentation. Uh, Markdown doesn't, also doesn't uh, do includes. Uh, which I like to use, like write it once and then use it in a whole bunch of different places instead of having a copy of the library everywhere. You know, that's how we end up with how many, how many libz uh, functions inside the kernel needed to be fixed at one point. You know, we had like 15 different copies of the same code inside the kernel. Use it, use it once. You guys, you, can, you guys figured that out a long time ago. Uh, email block coding. Uh, uh, so it's using the greater than thing for block quoting and stuff like that, which is great in email, but typing that up is, no, it's just annoying. And triple back quoting. Okay, anytime you use back ticks for stuff, you're just going to really annoy me. So, um, you know, using three of them in a row at the beginning and the end was stupid when they thought of it, and it's going to continue being stupid forever. All right. Uh, and then there are some other mi minor nits that, that annoy me. Uh, that's part of the home game. Play with markup, find out what, anno what annoys you about it, and then move to ASCII doc. Uh, one of the nice things about mark uh, Markdown is it actually is really simple. There's a lot of different versions of it, unfortunately, because it's simple and it didn't do everything. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really easy to use, but I think in the end it, it becomes problematic for long-term use. Uh, some key use cases for me, system and procedure documentation. So I'm writing documentation for other system ins for what the processes that we're doing at work. Um, and uh, for that, I wanted to have a table of contents that gets created automatically so that you know, they, can, they can, instead of having to read a long page, they can get to where they're wanting to go. Um, and I didn't want us to have to maintain that by hand uh, because that doesn't work long term. It doesn't work medium term. Um, so I needed, uh, also wanted a wiki with web UI, uh, which I got. We're using uh, uh, GitHub uh, uh, Enterprise for Work, whatever. So I've got a wiki. Other people can use the wiki if they don't want to do plain text. But I can go through and do the plain text stuff. Uh, and the nice thing about this is it's in GitHub. It's, it's in Git. So I check it out, make my changes, commit the changes, push them back up. Boom, I've got stuff. So I'm doing all of my work inside of Git. Everything's committed. We get comments, all the things you would get from normal uh, code. I think we should have that for documentation as well. Uh, also with being text-based markup, it's grappable. I can grep and look for things. Uh, and I do that a lot because I like, ah, I know I wrote about this somewhere and do a, an R grep in my documentation tree and go figure out where it is, right? Um, you can do automation so I can have scripts to go grab stuff and check things in. I don't have to go, I don't have to do a whole bunch of weird things in order to, to, to add to the documentation because it's plain text formatting. So basically a little Perl, maybe a little said knock and poof, I got stuff, right? Uh, Again, standard revision control. So I can use whatever, you know, Git, SVN, whatever I want. It's plain text. So I can use whatever plain text tool, uh, revision control tool that I want. Uh, if you really want to use uh, SCCS, that's your fault. All right. Uh, so you go, go ahead and do that. Uh, and then this was a huge one for me uh, with being able to do things uh, this way. It was disaster recover, DR. So now, since I've got this in our GitHub account, I can check it out on my jump hosts and on my, de on my desktop and on my laptop and any, any other device that I've got and, and automate keeping that up to date so that if we have a disaster system uh, of sorts where we've lost most of our infrastructure for some reason, whatever, and you know, I've got to have the jump host before I can do anything else because that's how I get to the machines I'm going to fix. So if I restore a jump host and I automatically get my documentation and I don't have to worry about GitHub Enterprise coming back up, I'm good to go. Right? I can start working on it then. And sure, it's in plain text instead of uh, HTML, but if I really, really care, I can do the same thing as I did here. I can go through and turn it into a slidey presentation. I can change it and I can export it as HTML and set up a web server on my jump host. And boom, I've got all my documentation in whatever form I need 
fairly quickly, and I have it on any jump host that we, that we restore. Once I finally add those cron jobs to the jump host, but we're getting there. Uh, and then, like I said, include files. The fact that I can write one thing, you know, if I've got a, a, a mechanism for uh, doing something, like at the last place I was at, I was documenting a lot of things for, for the knock. So I would have, here's how this tool works and the things you do. And I wanted the documentation for how to go fix this problem in that document, but I also wanted it in the run book for the knock. And they were two different documents because they had two different purposes. But the procedure was the same. And we were using a, t a system that did not do include files very well. And it really, so I basically just had to keep them in, uh, uh, synced by hand, which was annoying. Here, I can create that, that, that procedure as a file, and I can include it back in. In theory, that the include files don't actually work in the GitHub wiki. I'll, I'll cover that at the second to last slide, the penultimate slide. All right. Uh, document conversion, it's fairly easy. There's a couple different tools to do it. ASCII doc is the original tool. So you can do ASCII doc, tell it what kind of backend you want it to use. So what do you want to convert it to? Uh, in this case, Slidey is a W3C standard for creating JavaScript webby presentation thingies. Uh, so I said, give it the Slidey backend. And then I told it what file to do. And it makes, in this case, instead of file.adoc, it makes file.html. And then I can go through and open that up in a browser. And poof, I have a presentation, right? Uh, Pandoc is also another tool that does a lot of, of documentation sliding, slicing and dicing from one format to another format. It's a generic tool, but it does understand ASCII doc and it understands a whole lot of other things. So it opens up options that ASCII doc doesn't cover itself. Uh, and um, it also opens up options to go from one format to another format. So if you need an intermediate format for some reason, uh, Pandoc can help you with that. Uh, and then ASCII Doctor is a re-implementation of ASCII Doc, kind of. Uh, ASCII Doc is originally in Python. ASCII Doctor is in Ruby. I don't know the, the, the people that write, wrote it think it matters, whatever. To me, it's a tool. Uh, it does what it needs. Uh, but the key for me is ASCII Doctor covers a couple formats that ASCII Doc doesn't use. Um, so I can use either of the tools. Um, and ASCII Doctor is also what GitHub uh, uses for its ASCII Doc conversions. So you create an ASCII Doc file. They use that, but when they render it as HTML, they're using ASCII Doctor as the tool for rendering it. And they've made a couple slight changes. I'm not going to cover those, but they're, if you're doing a, a, a GitHub, uh, you'll want to look at the, the changes because there's a couple small things that will bite you. Uh, getting graphics. So ASCII Doc also understands how to use some external tools. So these are uh, uh, three different tools for creating graphics inside of your document. You can also just include images in uh, an external file. Um, but the nice thing is these are actually ASCII tools for creating things, where you can say, here's a bunch of data. Go create my chart. Go create whatever it is. Uh, you, know, you can describe what you're wanting to do uh, with them. So you, again, have plain text that you can, you can check in. So you've got revision control on your data. Uh, now, the syntax for ASCII doc is fairly simple, but it can get complex. Um, as I said, it was originally created to, to create uh, uh, um, uh, doc types. And it's, those are fairly complex documents. I mean, it's for a book. And it's for a wide variety of different types of books. So there's all kinds of things that you can do with, with that. Um, and we let printers get a hold of it because printers have been doing strange things with print for hundreds of years. And they have some, some, some uh, complex processes which actually matter, but you know, for those of us that just want to write words, they're complex. Um, so the nice thing for me is I don't have to care about that unless I actually start writing a book or doing something where I care about those features. If I don't care about those features, I just ignore them. Uh, and the documentation is pretty good. So when you get to where you don't need to ignore them, you can go look it up and figure it out. All right. Uh, headers. It's got two different formats. I use the single line format because well, it's a single line. The other one's two lines. Well, I could use a single line. It's easier, it's shorter, it takes less space. Uh, so an equal sign says this is basically the title of the document. That's actually only for um, books. It's not for articles, uh, but it's there. Uh, and then you use increasing equals for subheaders and so forth, uh, however you want to look at it. And it, I've just got an example here where you can see that you can do um, uh, you know, subheader and then back up and so forth, just like we would expect. Paragraphs, you just put text with blank lines on either side of it. 
So here is some text. Return, return. Here's some more text. I have now have two paragraphs. Pretty, pretty simple. Uh, and like many other tools, that's not you know an uncommon thing. Uh, unordered uh, lists, we use stars. And if you use multiple stars, you get indention within the list. Um, and uh, one of the things that's with this, uh, uh, I mentioned in the editor of your choice. So if you open up a file in, in VI and you know fred.txt and start putting stars at the beginning of your, your line, Vim gets all mad and starts throwing things up in rainbow colors and blinks and stuff like that. Um, but because Vim understands uh, um, ASCII doc if you've got the right syntax files installed, then it does the right thing with the stars. So that was the other key is I used to do the, basically this type of thing in my own format. So I avoided the things that looked weird in Vim. Uh, and, uh, but that was because I didn't want to go to the bother of writing a syntax file. Well, with ASCII doc, we have a syntax file. All that's taken care of for me. Uh, and there's lots of different editors that, that support it. Uh, and then an ordered list. We use dots instead of uh, stars. Same thing. You can put multiple dots to indent. So you've got you know, uh, sub subcategories. Uh, and I should explain the top is what the actual text looks like in the file. And the bottom is how it's, it's rendering. Um, so the top is basically a code block, which we'll get to in a second. It does checklists. So you can go through and add a checklist as well. Uh, and then for links, you put the, this one's a little bit weird for what most places do, or at least it seems to me. You put the actual link, and then you put the information in, in square brackets. Um, and then, uh, it, again, it's rendered, and you render to just what's in, inside the square brackets. Uh, for source code, if you want to go through and quote that, use four dashes uh, by itself on a line, all your source code, and then another four dashes at the end to, to end the block. Uh, and it's got a bunch of different types of blocks. I'll let you discover those on your own. Uh, and then I gave it some examples, some bash uh, 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 code. And I did, I did have to go through and install a um, uh, um, code uh, uh, highlighting uh, library in order for this to work. Uh, I forgot to put that in the, in the, I just was happy it was finally working and forgot to put it back in the, in the slides. Uh, so I did have to add another tool in order for the, the syntax highlighting to work. Um, but uh, it takes care of syntax highlighting on the export for you, which is nice. Uh, and understands a bunch of different languages with the different uh, highlighters you get available. Uh, ASCII doc supports four different highlighters uh, that I've never heard of. So, uh, uh, Issues. So as I say before, uh, um, not all features are necessarily available. So in Slidey, there's some features that ASCII doc does that are not available in Slidey. Uh, where Slidey doesn't support it, or there's a couple of features where Slidey does support it, but the exporter doesn't export them correctly. Uh, that caused me a decent amount of frustration with my scale presentation uh, this, this year, uh, earlier this year. Um, but I just left that part of it out. I was, I was wanting to do something annoying anyway, so I left it out. Um, so, uh, but it's, some of that has to do with not every format supports the same things. So for instance, uh, one of the things that you're supposed to be able to do with the slidey stuff is uh, include media files. Well, if you're exporting to something that's going to be printed in a, on dead tree, that's not going to play the video anyway, not at this point, maybe in a couple of years. Um, so uh, you know, that's th th some of that is just by nature of what are you exporting to? It's not going to do that, right? Um, if you are exporting to, to 8.5 by 11 PDF, your 400 column wide uh, table is not going to render very nicely. You know, that's, that's in there. Um, but some of it is uh, that, I, as I said, said, I found with Slidey and with a couple of other, the other uh, back, uh, back ends, they didn't actually export all the things that they say they would export. I don't know if those are bugs. Well, they are bugs, but I don't, I don't know, you know w what was going on there. I didn't take time to figure it out. Um, but overall, I've been very happy with ASCII doc. Uh, and for the most part, found that I can write once and export to a whole bunch of different things. Um, but uh, you know, for, for like the slidey thing, I'm writing explicitly for the slidey stuff. And I haven't tried to figure out what would happen if I turned this into a, uh, um, um, a book or something like that. Okay. Uh, and then some resources. Uh, and I'll post the slides so you don't have to, to copy these down, whatever. The ASCII doc site, um, I actually found that the ASCII doc, or ASCII doctor documentation is a lot simpler. Uh, part of it is the ASCII doc 
documentation is, hey, here's how you write a book and all the things you need to do for writing a book. Whereas the ASCII doctor is like, hey, you need to write some documentation and you don't have to think about things. Here, here's a pretty quick and, and easy way of going through and doing it. Um, so I'm pointing at the, uh, uh, at the uh, syntax quick reference. Uh, that's a great introduction for getting started. Uh, and if you're wanting to do more with it, uh, they've got another document that actually goes into more depth uh, that's nice as well. Uh, GitHub, as I said, has their own uh, uh, ASCII doc. Uh, they've got a little bit of a, some differences, so the cheat sheet. Uh, and I couldn't find documentation on how GitHub is doing stuff, and they're having some problems today, so I didn't finish. Or not GitHub, but uh, GitLab. So I, I didn't uh, get into research that as much. All right, any uh, questions? Yes, Ed. Have you come across any feature that would allow you to do annotation? Like if you wanted to put a footnote on a page or something? Yes, it does have a footnote and annotation. It's got a, a bunch of different things of it about annotation uh, that I did not get a master's in, in English lit, so I didn't understand what most of them were for. Um, but it had a whole bunch of different things in there. Um, and uh, um, the, the ASCII doctor documentation has it. Um, and then the ASCII doc original documentation uh, probably has, uh, you know, would be the, you know, have, might have, or does have a more expanded uh, example set up for what they're doing with annotation. Did you see anything called purple numbers? I did not notice any references to Prince or any of his albums, so no. Uh, the que oh, first question was, does it have uh, uh, annotation? I answered that. Uh, and then the second was, does it have, did I see purple numbers, whatever those are? No. So, can you make tables? Yes, you can make tables. Uh, I was trying to throw that in there, and I was doing something wrong, so I left that out, sorry. Uh, it's, it's basically an open, bra uh, open pipe, or not open pipe, pipes are, uh, a pipe, three equal signs, and then pipe delimited cells for the, each of the rows, and then a pipe and three equal signs at the end. But it's not a reverse pipe, it's not a, it's not a phi, it's just another if, so um, on there. But the documentation will have, have stuff on there. And it had a bunch of examples on things you could do for like uh, 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 aligning left or vertical alignment and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't see anything that gets, you know, gets data to, to, to hop from one cell to another to confuse people, but maybe, I don't know. All right, any uh, other questions? No? Okay. So now if you get out your systems, we have a quiz. No, uh, I should have done. It would have been, would have been fairly easy. Um, so thank you very much. I think that was